Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Q the Geek, and this is Shenzhen IO in real life, part five, the build. So in today's episode, we're going to cover the build. So I've gone through and I've 3D printed the mechanical design that we did back in part three. I have built up the circuit board that we designed in part two, and I have programmed it with the code that we wrote in part four. So now we're going to see how everything comes together and take a look at that. But before we go on, I just wanted to throw a couple of quick thank yous out to my Patreon supporters, to Tom Van Loon and Yannick Poirier. Thank you so much for your support. It is humbling and truly appreciated. If you want to support me, you can hit me up over at patreon.com slash The geek. The link is in the description below. Other things you can do to support me is you can like and comment on the video. Be sure to subscribe. Click the little notification bell so that you get notified as soon as my videos go up. And be sure to be sharing my channel on your social media so that other people you might know that could be interested in my content can find me. Whether that's your friends or your coworkers or anybody who could be interested in this, let them know by sharing my channel. Thank you. Now, on to the montage. Okay, so now that we've gone through and done all that 3D printing, and I've gone through and built up the board, we have this. We've got the two LEDs on there, as you can see. We've got the microcontroller. And on the back, we have our battery cell. Everything turned out pretty good. Now we just need to get some firmware on it. So what we're going to do for that, I have this Arduino Uno that uh, I brought off some jumper wires. Now there's, the wiring for this is actually the standard way you can create a, an Arduino using a breadboard. If you go to Arduino's website and you just search for Arduino to breadboard, you should be able to find that. Otherwise I will be leaving a link in the description so you can see what the wiring is for this. But the punchline is, these two lines that are coming from down here are the ground and the 3.3 volts. These four lines are used for the reset, the MISO, the MOSI, and the clock for the SPI bus. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to load this Arduino up with the Arduino 2 ISP um, firmware that is included with the Arduino package, the Arduino IDE. And then we're going to change the programmer over to use this as the programmer instead of using the integrated programmer that is right here on this Arduino. And with that, we'll be able to use this to program our device. The, the cool thing with this is if you already have an Arduino, you don't actually have to go out and buy the programmer. You don't have some of the built-in debugging stuff that you would normally get from having a dedicated programming tool. They will allow you to do certain things like breakpoints and some other stuff, but this will at least let us program and get it working. So let's go ahead and we'll get this set up and we'll take a look at what it looks like. So as you can see, I have this plugged into the computer through my USB cable. I've plugged this into the header the same way that I have it wired. And then I've got it all set up so that the board is now being powered from this Arduino. 
and I can go ahead and program it. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the Arduino IDE and I'll show you what's going to go on there. Okay, so the first thing that I noticed as I was running through a trial run on this was that at least on my Linux machine, I do need to have elevated privileges, so I need to run this as root. So I'm going to open up my terminal here. This is something that you don't have to do. There's other ways that you can do this, and I'll show those in a second. But this is what I find to be the fastest way. So if I take a look at my home directory here, I have Arduino-IDE. So we're going to change directory into Arduino-IDE. And uh, the way that I do the autofill on Linux is by hitting tab if you're not familiar with that. So you're gonna see a lot of that kind of thing. We're gonna do another list and see what we have in here. There is an Arduino program that is listed right here. And we are going to run that as root uh, with administrative privileges by using sudo dot slash Arduino. And by hitting that, go ahead and put in my password you'll see it's starting to come up over here and there we go so I have gone through and modified the code a little bit I did change this delay um, this is no longer accurate this should be around one second uh, it might be a little bit higher um, but I have fixed a few things in the code as was mentioned in part four I did actually have a problem with how I did one of these and I have since fixed that so we shouldn't need to worry about anything that way and like I said, I have already tested the code and it does work now. Now, the first thing we need to know is we need to program the Arduino to use the ISP. So we're gonna come down here to examples, Arduino ISP, and open this. We can open our tools, go down here, and we're going to use the Arduino Uno. And as well, we need to make sure the port is correctly selected, which mine has automatically populated it and says that it has. And the programmer, we need to use the AVR ISP MK2. So now that that's all done, we can hit upload here. This will talk out to the microcontroller, it's compiling the sketch, and we've uploaded. So you can see down here, it's done uploading, so everything was done successfully. Now we can close this, come back over here, and we need to change a few things. So we're no longer going to be trying to make this as an Uno, but we're going to use the Arduino Mini, or why am I, okay, Arduino Pro or Pro Mini. And we're gonna set this for the Atmega 3.3 volts and change our programmer back to Arduino as ISP. Now that we have that, we're gonna go through and we'll burn a bootloader. And you can see here we actually got this error. It says the expected signature for the Atmega 328P is IE950F. Now this is because this is looking for the, the 328P and we use the 328PB. Now the PB is a little bit cheaper and it does actually have some additional features as uh, such as an additional UART. So we need to go through and modify this. So what we're gonna do is come down to our file structure we are going to navigate into the Arduino IDE, go to Hardware, Tools, AVR, and Etsy. Now, as you can see, I've already done a backup of this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to open up avrdude.conf, and this is the file. So what we can do is just do a quick control F to find, looking for a 328P, and this is going to tell me right here where I'm starting to find it. So come down here, and this is where we have the signature. So this is what it's storing as. Now if we look over here to the backup config, this is something that I've already modified for this, and I've got this note here that we're going to use 0F for the 328, or we're going to use 16 for the 328PB. And we'll just go ahead and change it over to 16. This is gonna be, if you notice I opened up the backup copy and I've got the normal configuration copy. So we're gonna go through and just update that and make this 16. Save that, close it. And now we're going to restart the Arduino IDE. Now that we've done that, everything should work correctly. Tell it to work and burn bootloader. 
saying it's invalid because the fuses have already been set. Now I've already done that, so don't need to worry about the bootloader burning this time, but you will need to burn a bootloader every time you do the first time setup on one of these chips. Now we have the sketch. We're gonna come down here and use upload using programmer. Now it's gonna go through and use our Arduino, talk to it. It's uploading and upload done. And now you can see we've got the program uploaded and our LEDs are blinking. So everything is good to go that way. Um, you will notice that the purple LED is actually a little more faint than I would like it to be. We're gonna talk about the reasons why that is in the next episode. Um, in part six, we're going to do a review of the schematic and I'm gonna talk about what things I would like to change if I were to do this again and if I was developing it for professional means. But um, for right now, this works. So let's go ahead and we'll do final assembly. Okay, so now we have everything here in front of us. This is what we're going to do. So we have the main body of the camera. We have our circuit board, the battery, the stand, and the back door piece. So we're going to start off by gluing our stand, our mount piece, with super glue onto the camera body. And we will go ahead and let this cure. I think that should be okay. So the next thing we wanna do now is we're going to insert our battery into the battery holder, just like that. And we see the circuit board starting up. There we go. Now we're just going to insert the board into the railing system. And we are going to slip the back cover on. It doesn't exactly have a tight fit, but it's nice enough to show what we need to do. So there we have it. There's our finished device. That is how you make a fake security camera in real life. Okay, there we go. That is our finished product. That's our fake security camera. Now there are a few things to notice. You can see that now the red LED is not actually blinking very strong. And the purple LED is kind of there. Um, it's still fairly faint, but there's some issues with this design. And I kind of knew that going into it. I did intentionally set up some of these uh, problems to be there. This is not the most robust circuit and I'm going to talk about some of the things I would do differently in the next episode uh, which will be the final episode of this series. But for right now we've actually got our product. It's it's functional other than a few little issues. Um, one of the reasons that it seems to be pretty much dead right now is that the battery I used is a little bit older battery and uh, wasn't exactly brand new when I started using it. So its charge is not very great. But there's also a few other things going on that I'm gonna talk about next time. So for right now, that's pretty much it. So again, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. My current channel goal is to get the channel up to 1,000 subscribers. So if you have any friends, family, or coworkers that you think might be interested in my channel, please let them know. Share it on your social media. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.